I'm literally holding cups and phone rolls. <laughs> because Welcome back to my sit down chat with Libby. Hello everybody. <laughs> so a long Following the last video I did regarding my gut health, there was a lot of questions that were well beyond my knowledge. Mm -hmm. And as I know a lot, but I would never want to give advice because I'm not a professional in this area. So I brought Libby along because she is a professional in this area. Oh, yes, well. So tell us about yourself, Libby. <laughs> uh, I'm a nutrition coach, actually, which might be a new term to a lot of you, but it's uh, very popular in America, which is where I discovered it. And uh, I'm certified with Precision Nutrition. And I trained with a company called Black Eye Nutrition in America. I did an internship with them and then they hired me as a nutrition coach, uh, which has been an incredible experience that's much more focused on macros, fat loss, uh, putting on lean muscle mass for performance and things like that. But my personal health history and experience is very much focused on gut health and autoimmunity because that's what I've dealt with a lot throughout my life. So then I was hired by Kylo, the wonderful Medispa on James Street in Brisbane and that's where I get to really hone my skills with people uh, working on their gut health and and many varied types of illnesses and that's where I met Katie. Yes. We're going to bust some myths, talk about a few yeah. things. I put up a poll on my Instagram last night, well not a poll, but a question box and we got flooded with message, uh, questions. <laughs> so let's just get straight into it. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, first question, what would be your first step at addressing any gut health issues? If people could take one step or the first step in the process, what would it be? I think Particularly when people come to see me, I like to see what they're eating and what they're being treated by. And a lot of people actually don't know what that is for them. Mm -hmm. And the best way to do that is by doing an elimination diet, which is really, really difficult. It's tough, I understand that. But it's incredibly important to determine what is happening in your gut. Because what Katie is reacting to, what I'm reacting to, is not going to be what you're reacting to, I can almost guarantee it. And getting to the bottom of that and figuring out what you're reacting to will lead us to what the root cause of those gut health issues are. For example, when I was treating Katie, the really interesting thing was uh, I put her on these gut healing smoothies, you know, pretty much full elimination, and she was still kind of reacting to the avocado in them. And I was like, ooh, that's interesting. And then we're having a whole conversation about it, and she tells me that she Crying. reacts really. <laughs> <laughs> conversation. <laughs> she was. Uh, she told me that she reacts really badly to watermelon, and she hadn't told me that in the initial consultation. This had come up because obviously she doesn't eat it because it, she becomes so bloated after it. And as soon as she said that, I was like, "Oh my god, it's fructose!" And then I knew what to test for, and I knew what to look for in Katie and how to treat that. But until I know those, those hints and markers, it's very, very difficult to treat because gut health is so complex. Okay, cool. So talking about SIBO, yeah. per, I wrote a question for myself asking what I reacted to and it ended up being fructose. Mm. That was, because you can get different Yeah, there's all different yeah, all stages, different of, stages it. of it. <laughs> that was what I was reacting to. Thank you for the person that asked if my tummy was feeling better. Mm. But what was the treatment? So you test positive, how do you then treat your SIBO? SIBO is a tough one. <clears throat> and I would like you to confirm that you have SIBO before going down the low FODMAP diet, the SIBO treatment diet, because uh, it is very complicated and it eliminates a lot of really good foods, uh, lots of vegetables and some fruits and things like that. So you don't want to be doing that if you don't have SIBO. Uh, it's a real pain in the butt. So treating SIBO, there are a few approaches. The greatest one, the one with the most efficacy, and this goes for people with IBS as well. They seem to fare very well on a low FODMAP diet. Uh, FODMAPs is, you know, fermentable, oligo, disaccharide, monosaccharides, and polyols. And you need to follow the Monash University app. This is a university in Australia who have done the most in, uh, investigative studies into SIBO for many, many years on humans. And so they have been able to determine exact amounts of certain foods that you can tolerate with SIBO. 
So the low FODMAP diet is number one, and that is probably first and foremost, because that is what you are reacting to in the foods. There is uh, an antibiotic or a group of antibiotics that they treat you with SIBO, but um, anyone who knows me knows how I feel about antibiotics. Uh, there is only a 50% non-recurrence rate, meaning that once you kill the SIBO with the antibiotics, about 50% of people SIBO comes back. So, <laughs> I mean, who wants to do that, right? Destroy your gut health with a, you know, 50-50 chance of it coming back. Uh, maybe you do, but uh, I wouldn't recommend that. And then there are herbal remedies, actually. There are things like Bactrex um, that contain uh, oregano oil, which is one of the most powerful natural antiviral, antifungal, um, antimicrobial products on the planet. Plants, I should say. Uh, so there's a few things like that, and they have a higher efficacy rate than the antibiotics. Why do we get bloated on our periods? So, and is that normal? So is normal. That, so normal. But is it normal but shouldn't be normal? It's normal but exacerbated by poor diet. Okay. Um, so, when you come to the end of your cycle, all your progesterone and estrogen drops off. At the same time, the lining of your uterus wall is filling up to then release. So, some of that bloating is actually really natural, it's blood and uterine lining. Uh, but also that, that drastic sort of drop in hormones can cause water retention. Uh, obviously you get a bit of constipation and diarrhea around your, um, around your period as well. Uh, all really, really normal. But PMS, bloating, gas, pain will all be exacerbated by poor diet and they include things like coffee and alcohol. Really shouldn't have coffee around your period. Uh, a lot of us don't know this, I know, but it exacerbates a lot of those problems. Mm. Alcohol does as well. You want to go on low sodium around your diet. That will help with some of that bloating and certainly help with water retention, low sugar and no processed food. And of course, around our period, all we do is, you know, head for the chocolate bars and all the crappy food because we feel like crap, but that makes us feel 10 times worse. Mm -hmm. So... Go for all of your whole foods, go for herbal teas, take care of yourself and nourish your body the way you know you should and you will lessen those symptoms a lot. Interesting. Mm. Caffeine. I know. Poor old caffeine. Poor gets a caffeine. bad rap, doesn't it? <laughs> Speaking of, how does caffeine affect the gut mm. and also thoughts on long blacks on an empty stomach? Mm. So I'm a long black girl. I'm going to, you know, defend girl. it um, <laughs> because I love it. But let me tell you, <clears throat> this is really important and we need to talk about stress response in the gut as well. Okay. So a long black coffee, when you have not had any food, it enters your bloodstream really quickly. And the best way I've heard it referred to is it's like a punch to your adrenals. You're punching yourself in your adrenals. So that's your um, glands back here that re release adrenaline and cortisol. And cortisol is your stress hormone. So a long black on an empty stomach makes you release extra cortisol. You already release cortisol naturally when you wake up. That is our waking response. Uh, we release cortisol to wake up into the world. So then this is why we use coffee to wake us up because it releases more cortisol. But when your stress response is impaired, or your gut health is impaired, this is really bad for you. So stress and the gut are so intrinsically linked, mm. you cannot separate them. So people with IBS and SIBO, they might be doing, or any, sorry, inflammatory bowel diseases, Crohn's, ulcerative colitis, autoimmunity. If you are stressed, you are not going to be well. You're not going to be managing your gut health. Even if you're eating all the right things, doing all the right things, if you're stressed, you may still be experiencing poor gut health. So why exacerbate that with black coffee? Uh, I highly recommend you add a fatty type milk, like macadamia milk or coconut milk to slow down the absorption of the coffee. Better yet, have some food before your coffee. Better yet, have green tea, and even better than that, herbal tea. But we're not perfect, mm. are we? We no. have to have some vitamins. Here's me thinking about my, I'm thinking about my long black that I had this morning. <laughs> like, Punch in yeah. the adrenals. Yeah. yeah. Interesting you say that because I went off coffee for the first month. 
Yep. We I think did. I made yeah, you. you made me. We and had many conversations about that. <laughs> what? Do I have to? Why? I'm like, look, you want to get better, and this is what I say to so many people: you want to get better, or do you want to live like this? Then I wanted to get better. You have to do the work. Hence and the avocado smoothies, which yeah. I'm <laughs> drink again. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, okay. This is a good one. How? how to minimize your bloating once you are already bloated like how to navigate around that oh. so you've eaten something you've done something maybe you did or didn't know you shouldn't have done it yep. you're bloated yep. and you think how can i get this to go okay. down as soon as possible number one thing that comes to mind would be digestive enzymes oh i love those i feel like i've got to explain yeah, my finding <laughs> i've been looking at that the whole video thinking what <laughs> is that <laughs> It's my Finding Nemo band-aid. I, um, <laughs> I cut my finger last night cooking. I've got new knives, new Victorinox oh, oh, knives, jealous. and just boom. And um, I hate boring band-aids. <laughs> I really hate them. If there are any fun type of band-aids band yeah, with Disney characters or so fun floral, I've got Finding Nemo. I've got Nemo. That's gorgeous. Yeah, thanks. So You're anyway, welcome. I was, I was admiring that thinking, interesting choice. Okay, so <laughs> bloating and symptoms and how to minimize those once they happen. Digestive enzymes. Uh, I feel like not enough people know about these I, things. I, again, was someone that had been to that many specialists and researched and knew every yeah. supplement herbal tonic under the sun. <laughs> and you said digestive enzymes. I thought... Wow, well, <laughs> it really does, like, doesn't oh, it? Yeah. Okay, so um, because I talked about those in the last video. Oh, great! Yeah, and the um, stomach acid. So I think uh, people, some people are born with low stomach acid. Uh, certain cultures in the world have different types of stomach acid. Certain cultures in the world cannot process different types of food, and some really can. You know, like uh, everybody talks about the Mongols, the Mongol culture. Uh, pretty much all they eat is dairy. They just have different types of cheese. I've been there. It was really intense. You go on your oh my God. <laughs> it was terrible and I was so hungry all the time and sick. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you know, they have um, billions of these enzymes that break down dairy. Different types of cultures have different enzymes, but also poor gut health, um, antibiotics, stress. stress lowers the uh, enzyme quality in your gut. So there are different types of digestive enzymes on the market and I do find that these help. Let's say you react to dairy and there has been some butter in some kind of sauce and you didn't know about it. Or I react really badly to soy. I get hives um, from actually from the wheat content in the soy sauce, let's say. Um, so then you want to be taking digestive enzymes to try to help to break down those particles before that reactivity occurs or even after the reactivity occurs because something like hives, let's say, is a high histamine response. It means all the histamines have been released in your body. So in that case, you can take an antihistamine will actually help. Digestive enzymes will help to break it down through your digestive system. So let's say it hits your gut and you have a reaction. You kind of want to get to it, let's say, before it hits your bowel. Um, another thing would be things like apple cider vinegar, warm lemon water. Uh, what about exercise? Because often people talk about going for a walk. Definitely walking. walking. I find if I run, though, once I'm already a little bit bloated, I look even worse yes, after a run. Because it's stressful. Yeah. So high-intensity exercise, including running, but particularly HIIT, CrossFit, anything like that, will release cortisol. And as we know, cortisol and stress hormones mess with your gut health. So no high-intensity. Long walks are actually really de-stressing mm. and they're really calming to your nervous system. So I would say that, meditation, uh, yes, I think that would be... I know for me personally, sense. if I wake up, if say I've gone out for dinner with some friends and I wake up the next morning just feeling that bit bloated, bit of yeah. water retention, I will, I'm not a faster and introduce where you think, where you feel here, but I would just have bone broth. Yep. Until I really feel hungry again, right? Because I, if I if I Probably wake just up with it, letting that yeah, process letting it, and get it out, yeah, and then I'll go again for a walk. Yep. I'll have a walk. I'll have a walk. I'll go for a walk, and I won't drink coffee because yeah. I know that'll make it worse. But I'll bone broth, go for a walk, and yeah. then wait till I my body really feels hungry. Yeah, I guess and then I, I do understand. Meal, I yeah, I'm not not 
I never recommend fasting, particularly for women, mm. but I understand that feeling of discomfort and wanting to get rid of that. I think um, that's what it probably is more yeah, than anything. Yeah, so that would be a lot of water, drinking lots mm. of water, flushing everything out. Uh, I've been really getting into my sauna and ice bath. Uh, very anti-inflammatory yes. on your body and uh, ice yeah. bath. I can get it on the sauna. It's the ice bath. Yeah, the ice bath is the it? hard part, but it's it the is. one that's really, really good for you. So yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we'll, we'll get to that point. I'm still recovering from avocado smoothies. Right. Um. Oh, can you get a referral for your GP to get a breath test like the test Katie did in her recent video? You mm. don't need a referral. Mm. Uh, no, oh, I can. I can give. I can send you. Um, a link to the SIBO breath mm. test. But you don't need a referral. I think your GP can get one for you. Like, I think they can order a SIBO. As in, like, are you saying it's more like bulk build situation or just they can order an Oh, yeah, you? it's never bulk build. It's not SIBO's bulk build, not... but you can. I just got it online. I just jumped online and got it from the link that you sent me. Yeah, so you can ask me for a SIBO yep. test and put me as your pr practitioner, mm. and then I'll get the results and be able to tell you what to do with that. Um, because you do get the results, but unless you really know what you're looking at. Or yes. how to then navigate. Okay, great, you get the results. Yeah. Is it okay? What now? Yeah. And that's where you need someone like Libby. Lactose, my favorite. <laughs> okay, two questions. Can someone heal being lactose intolerant? And mm. where is it? Can eating lactose-free products still make me bloated slash irritate my gut? Yes. Two very different things. So everybody has heard of lactose intolerance. It became a buzzword. 10, 20 years ago for a while, everyone's like, I'm lactose intolerant. <laughs> um, you might be, uh, but you could also be allergic to cassian, which is what I discovered I was probably quite a while ago. I knew I reacted to dairy, and maybe I thought like everybody else it was lactose, but it was cassian. Cassian is the protein in dairy. Lactose is the sugar in dairy. Um, just two very different things. The thing with lactose is there is an enzyme in our bodies sometimes. Some people don't have it. Um, I don't have it. Yeah, which breaks down lactose. And so you can take a digestive enzyme. There's one at the pharmacy called Lactes or something that will break mm. down lactose. It doesn't break down cassian though. So um, if you're reacting to lactose-free products, you are probably reacting to cassian. But can I also just say about dairy products... Poor dairy. Where, 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 where we start? start? Uh, it is so highly processed in our modern world. So if you were eating uh, raw, you know, unhomogenized, unpasteurized milk, your body would probably be able to process it. But 99% um, of dairy is heated beyond 100 degrees Celsius to kill all of the bacteria in it. But what you need to understand is that the bacteria in different types of foods helps us digest the food and it helps feed the good bacteria in our gut that's why things like ooh, fermentable foods things like kimchi and sauerkraut what and a hot kombucha word. oh kombucha <laughs> yes that's why they're so good for us because Hello, they no, have pregnant, bacteria though. in them <laughs> yeah you it can't do it can you is it because of what it's made on though is it absolutely the fructose or, absolutely yeah the fructose. when it's made on apple or mm, yeah, and 99 like of them have apple in it yeah right yeah or pear yeah and that would mm. be very no-no for you Ooh. um so yeah i think that's why dairy why so many of us react to dairy because it's not in its natural state whereas if you have your 50 year old blue cheese in france fantastic for you unless you have a high histamine <laughs> There's, there's always, always a but. There's always like it could be good for you. I always However, have if you have this condition, it's not. It ain't. Sister. Yeah, I mean that's the tough thing. It's like, um, so can we treat it? Can not, you treat? Can you, can you heal oh, your lactose right. intolerance? No, no. If you don't, <laughs> you, can, you can't have your cheese. <laughs> no, you can take digestive enzymes to try to help if it's an absolutely necessary thing in your life. Um, if, if you improve your gut health, uh, which we can go into as well, how to do that, uh, you will improve how you digest your food. Libby, we've answered <laughs> a few questions and they were probably the most prevalent questions that yep. we got across both our channels. If you could give us just like your quick five tips, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh, so much under pressure, pressure. <laughs> your quick five tips mm. 
Yeah. Or things you feel like you tell, like you say and do oh, faces blue. Yes, yes. Like what would you say? Let's do five tips to heal your gut Oof. and your five biggest myths you have to talk to people about. Yes. Go. You've got one minute. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure on top of me, and the trainer's coming out and go. Ah! So, um, definitely your elimination diet. Find out your food triggers. Yeah. Uh, I always say to people, go 100%. If you're going to mm. heal your gut, heal it. Don't kind of go two steps forward, three steps back by going, oh, I'm good all week and then I have a blowout all weekend. You're just, you know, deflaming your gut and then inflaming it and then get it better. Number three, bone broth. My favorite two words. Oh my god, it's just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm actually walking out of time. Bone broth. Bone broth heals everything. It does. Um, number four would be take take care of your stress, and Ooh. this is something I recommend to every single client. And how many people would take it on? I don't know. Maybe probably ten percent, twenty percent will start introducing breath work, meditation or reducing high intensity exercise to something low intensity and more nourishing. Number five? Oh, I didn't have a number five ready. I didn't have That's any okay. of ready. Four's great. Four's good? Four's good. Is that good? Awesome, awesome. Okay, <clears throat> tell me okay. five biggest things that people come and they sit down and they say to you and you just feel like ripping your hair out. <laughs> Okay. Because I'm not mine, top five if anyone wants to know. Oh, I hope you don't get nervous. offended. I'm going to offend somebody. That's no, right. We're always offending people. Um, I'm, I'm having a real um, moment with the whole plant-based movement. Um, uh, there is a lot of... Oh, no. <laughs> there is a lot of propaganda, and I'm calling it propaganda. It is. Um, because, you know, if you watch What the Health or something like that, you are not understanding where that is coming from, who that is funded by, and what studies they're referring to, and how they are presenting that evidence. So number two I was going to talk about was low-carb movement. I love rice. <laughs> good, good. Can I, I'm going to interject here. Yep. <clears throat> but, um, primary source of evidence. Yes, yes. I was petrified of rice. Yep. Well, actually I always loved rice, but I didn't eat it because I always thought that that was what my gut was reacting to. Yeah. Obviously, turns out it was the fructose. Since all my gut healing process with Libby, I have probably two slices of bread. Gluten. I have to have gluten free, but you know. Yep. Whatever. Two slices of gluten free bread, uh, half a cup of oats, and a third to a half a cup of rice Yay. a day. A day. I and I'm the leanest. Yeah. I've been in such a long time. Carbs will make you lean. Carbs will carbs make you lean. lean. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh, I eat shred. a lot of carbs, and I used to not, and yeah. I was inflamed. So eat my carbs feel good. Somebody did ask a question about sourdough, which I did want to answer. Oh, okay. So um, sourdough is really interesting. Sourdough is the way we used to make bread a hundred years ago, and it is because it has a yeast culture. And when it ferments in the dough and they actually put it out in the sun for it to rise, that's the original way bread was made, the yeast eats the gluten. It feeds on gluten to produce, you know, to produce that gas and mm. that rising sort of and process, the, holes the, the fermentation. Yeah. So, holes. amazing, right? <laughs> Whereas now we make bread um, and it's full of gluten because we have genetically modified wheat um and it is not fermented properly with yeast and over a period of time and so it's very 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 difficult to digest so if you have a really great bakery with a beautiful sourdough bread it doesn't have to be gluten free for it to be easily digestible i actually think and you will not even think it is fact that if you had a really great quality sourdough yep. over a processed preservative sugar filled gluten free bread yep way better, be better for, for you. you yeah i'm about to experiment with sourdough Right. Watch this space. Yeah. Petrified, but also equally yeah. excited. Yeah. Okay, so that was, I guess, point three. Uh, so, the things that people come to me with. You've got two more. Mind two more myths. Two more myths to bust. Um, okay, that hit is how you lose weight. High intensity Ooh, interval training. Now, yes. this is with my personal trainer, this is a tough one. Um, no, I'm all for this. We we see eye to eye on good. training. Good. Yeah. So Katie's very much about weight training. You have to be doing weights, building lean muscle mass, and uh, the greatest way to achieve fat loss, let's say body recomposition, which means losing fat and gaining lean muscle mass, is by lifting weights 
and doing something like walking or a low intensity sort of steady state. And I don't mean steady state cardio like being on the friggin' elliptical at the gym, right? That's gonna release cortisol. Uh, I want to encourage things like walking where you're looking out in the sunshine, where you're talking with a friend, where mm. you are engaging with the world and with your body, where you're breathing. So the um, common theme, bringing that stress down. Yeah, absolutely. Stress, stress, stress. It's very hard to lose fat if your stress is high. Uh, okay, I've got number five. I'm okay, gonna bring yeah, this up. come on in. Calorie counting. Oof. Yep. Is it for everyone? No, it's definitely not. Um, and how I, do you feel about the stigma behind calorie counting? Well, so I work majority with cal calorie counting with the with Black Eye Nutrition. All of our online programming and everything is macros. It's um, synced with My Fitness Pal. And That's the calorie counting app. Oh, My Fitness aware. Pal, yeah, is where you track your food. And I find that if you're really serious about losing weight and you don't have um, eating disordered past um, or, you know, or mental fixations, OCD, things like that, then it works beautifully. You know, if you can, if you can just track your food and look at it as numbers going, this is how much I need to fuel my body. And specifically, if you under eat and you need to increase your calories for your health, for your health markers, to get your periods back, um, to heal your gut, things like that, then it's really good for you to track because you, you might underestimate how much you're eating a lot. Mm. Uh, I don't like doing it for people who get overwhelmed with that, um, who have an eating disordered past or who find it triggering in some way to track food. And that's really, understandable uh, and in that case then I work coaching I do phone calls like I actually just do a, mm. a check-in each week and we talk more about the quality of food and the quality of your sleep and all of the other health markers and and I would encourage more intuitive eating and intuitive eating is a new fad term it really makes me cranky like everything else um because even, even how can I you trust your intuition really all, and it's all based off things you consume via social media yep. someone something something someone's told you what somebody else this eats is, what else someone else eats a yep. passing comment and you think you're not absorbing it yep. but you are and yep. then you you know, you watch some beautiful supermodels yep. day in a life of what they eat and they're no, that's they, what I should eat. And it's like, no, and you're it's full you're of fructose. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Which isn't, fructose isn't bad. No. It's just bad for me. No, I love it. I, I love there you go. <laughs> okay, well, you can go love your fructose. It's like my poor partner with SIBO can't have um, onion and garlic. Yeah. And I'm just like, okay, I'll just make this little dish over here Pinch. with the onion and garlic and Him I'll and pour are it over the food. And you can go get onion and garlic. But I think... I think all in all, that's, there's a lot of info in there. There's a lot of info in there. I'm sorry for that. But if you do want any more clarification, I will leave Libby's details down in the description box yep. below and she can help you with any sort of your questions. Um, and if you do have any other questions, please leave them down below because we'll yeah any topics sit down again. Yeah, <laughs> if you want us to come back and deep dive on something else, more than yeah. happy to. Mm -hmm. That anyway. was just far too easy. Far too easy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Nice to meet you.